Have you ever been lost while walking in the forest? Or perhaps you've been lost on a car trip? Or while walking in a strange neighborhood? If you aren't familiar with a place, it's pretty easy to get lost. But fortunately, if you have a map with you, it's much easier to find your destination. A map is a drawing of the Earth, or a specific part of the Earth. There are many different types of maps, and many different ways to create maps. During the next few minutes, we're going to explore the fascinating subject of mapping, how to use maps, the many different kinds of maps, and some of the many ways maps are useful to us. You've probably used, or at least seen, a map. You probably have a book of maps called an atlas in your classroom or home. Often, cars have maps stored in the glove compartment that fold up. Most maps are printed on paper. Today, many maps are also digital and can be viewed on computers. This is a globe. A globe is a spherical representation of the Earth. A globe illustrates the Earth's water and land masses. Maps and globes tend to be drawn to scale. A scale compares the distance on the actual Earth to the distance on a map. We'll discuss scale in more detail later. First, let's talk about the many different kinds of maps. For example, this is a city street map and is used to help you find your way around a city. And this is a map showing hiking trails so backpackers can navigate their way in the wilderness. This is a map made by satellites showing different weather systems. And this is a nautical chart which helps those sailing ships to find their way in the ocean. There are hundreds of different kinds of maps. Let's take a more in-depth look at maps of the Earth. If you were to take a long trip on a boat or a plane, how would you locate or describe your position on the Earth? This is a tough thing to do, especially when there aren't any landmarks, such as in the middle of the ocean. Imaginary lines of latitude and longitude aid us in describing exact locations on the Earth's surface. The equator also referred to as zero degrees latitude, is located exactly halfway between the North and South Pole. The equator divides the Northern Hemisphere from the Southern Hemisphere. Lines running parallel to the equator are lines of latitude. The equator is zero degrees latitude. The North Pole is 90 degrees North latitude and the South Pole is 90 degrees south latitude. Minneapolis, Minnesota, for example, is at 45 degrees north latitude. And Nairobi, Kenya, in Africa, is located at about 2 degrees south latitude. Imaginary lines that run from pole to pole are called meridians, or lines of longitude. Each meridian is half of an imaginary circle around the globe. The prime meridian, which passes through Greenwich, England, is labeled zero degrees longitude. Locations west of the prime meridian are measured in degrees west, and meridians east of the prime meridian are measured in degrees east. Lines of longitude range from zero degrees to 180 degrees in both directions. Notice how the lines of latitude and lines of longitude form a grid. You decide. What's the advantage of this grid? The 
The grid pattern formed by intersecting lines of latitude and longitude enable one to pinpoint an exact location on the Earth's surface. For example, Hawaii is located at approximately 20 degrees north latitude and 155 degrees west longitude. This is the point where the two lines meet. This instrument, called a Global Positioning System, or GPS, uses satellites to pinpoint your exact latitude and longitude. Handheld GPS devices are useful to hikers and to boaters so that they may find their exact location. While students are going to school on the eastern side of North America, students in California are still sleeping. We keep track of time by measuring the movement of the Earth in relation to the Sun. The Earth rotates one full turn every 24 hours. While the side of the Earth facing the Sun is bright, the opposite side of the Earth is dark. You decide. How many time zones are there? Earth is divided into 24 time zones. A time zone is a belt of longitude on the Earth in which all areas have the same time. Each time zone is generally 15 degrees wide, separated by lines of longitude. In the continental United States, there are four time zones. At 7 a.m. in New York, the sun is rising. But in San Francisco, at 4 a.m., the sun has not yet risen. As the Earth rotates, the middle part of the country receives light, and then later the western part of the country gets light. If it wasn't for time zones, the sun would rise in San Francisco at 10 a.m., when calling a friend on the telephone across the country, it's important to recognize different time zones. For example, if you lived in California at 9 p.m., you might not want to call a friend in Virginia because it's midnight there. There are many different ways to view Earth. Because Earth is round, it's difficult to accurately project its image on a flat surface. One of the most common projections of Earth is the Mercator projection. The Mercator projection is very useful in navigation. Its major drawback is that land masses near the poles become distorted. For example, Greenland appears much bigger than its actual size. Another type of projection is the Robinson projection. In the Robinson projection, areas of land masses and their proportions are shown accurately. A third type of projection is the conic projection. Most road maps and weather maps are conic projections. This type of map is made by projecting a portion of the earth onto a cone and is quite accurate for small areas. As we've already mentioned, there are many kinds of maps, but most of them have several things in common. Let's take a look at this state road map. You decide. What symbols represent streets, roads, and highways? Different colored lines are the symbols used to represent streets, roads, and highways. What other symbols do you recognize? Notice the blue colored lines and areas which represent rivers and lakes. Many of these map symbols are highlighted in the legend. The legend explains the meaning of each symbol. You decide. What do you think this symbol of a plane represents? That's right, it represents the location of an airport. When reading a map, 
it's important to orient yourself on the map. In other words, it's important to identify north, south, east, and west. On most maps, north is at the top of the map. Most maps have an arrow labeled north or n, indicating the direction of north. Finally, maps are drawn so that certain distances on a map represent a certain distance on land. Scale is the relationship between these two distances. In the legend of this state highway map, 3 centimeters on the map equals 10 kilometers on land. The straight line distance between Shoreham and Brandon is about 6 centimeters. You decide. What distance is this on Earth? If 3 centimeters on the map equals 10 kilometers, then 6 centimeters on the map equals 20 kilometers. Different maps have different scales, and it's necessary to study the scale to better understand how to use a given map. It's a beautiful winter day, and you want to go cross-country skiing. You want to ski to a pond. You know there are two trails leading to the pond, and you want to take the trail that is not steep. How do you know which one is less steep? What you need is a type of map called a topographic map. A topographic map shows the changes in elevation on the Earth's surface. Topographic maps show mountains, ridges, and other features of the Earth using lines called contour lines. Look at all the brown contour lines on this map. A contour line connects all points on a map that have the same elevation. For example, this contour line is labeled 2000, meaning it connects elevation points which are 2000 feet in elevation. The difference in elevation from one contour line to the next contour line is a contour interval. On this cross-country ski map, the contour interval is 100 feet. Contour lines close together indicate a steep slope. Therefore, if you wanted to ski on a flatter trail, you would choose this trail, which crosses contour lines that are farther apart. Topographic maps also provide a lot of other information. These blue lines show streams and rivers, and this green shading shows forested areas. This dashed line indicates a hiking trail, and these small squares indicate buildings. As you can see, topographic maps are extremely useful maps especially if you like to travel outdoors. During the past few minutes, we've taken a look at some of the different kinds of maps. We took an in-depth look at Earth's reference points, including lines of latitude and longitude. And we explored how latitude and longitude can be used to pinpoint an exact location on the surface of the Earth. We also saw how the Earth is divided into different time zones. We took a look at some of the different projections of the Earth to make flat maps. We also learned about some of the essentials in map reading, including how to identify map symbols, direction, and scale and we took an in-depth look at the characteristics of topographic maps. So, the next time you use a map in a car, or take a look at a globe, think about some of the things we've discussed. You just might look at maps a little differently. Fill in the correct word when you hear this tone. Good luck, and let's get started. 
Number one, a is a drawing of the earth. Number two, a book of maps is called an Number three, a is a spherical map of the Earth. Number four, lines of run parallel to the equator. Number five, there are time zones on the Earth. Number six, the Mercator projection, land masses near the poles. Number seven, the explain symbols used in a map. Number eight, A compares the distance on Earth to the distance on a map. Number 9. A map shows changes in elevation. And number 10. A line connects areas on a map of the same elevation.